Hello, my name is Danny Banks, and today we will be looking at cognitive mapping, and more specifically, wayfinding behavior in a familiar environment. To do this, we will look at an experiment that I conducted to discover the cognitive maps in the UCSD students in the familiar environment of UCSD. For this experiment, I used a Garmin Gecko to record the paths of UCSD students. I recorded the paths of eight UCSD students, two freshmen, two sophomore, two juniors, and two seniors. I recorded their paths from two well-known spots on campus, Price Center to Remac. I then imported the GPS data into Google Maps to visualize their paths. With the routes visualized, I then used cognitive mapping frameworks to annotate the data. Let's start with an aerial view of the north end of the UCSD campus. Price Center is on the bottom right, while Remac is on the top left of the map. And here are the paths taken by the eight UCSD students, color-coded by their grade level. Green represents freshman, orange represents sophomore, blue represents junior, and red represents senior. Because the GPS devices are only so accurate, I decided to smooth out the paths. This first path was the most traveled route, the second path was the second most traveled route, and here is the third most traveled route, only traveled by one person. On the most traveled path, there is also a subpath shown here, and here are the normalized paths without the track logs. Let's take a look at the routes again. As you can see, most of the students took the middle path, so I will be focusing most of the analysis on that path. Now I will show what Eric Jones has described as cognitive gateways. Gateways, like landmarks, function as a kind of environmental marker. Gateways are places which are often visited and that new information becomes available at them. In cognitive mapping, such information is typically visual. The defining characteristics ensure that gateways mark important transitional locations. With this definition, we can hypothesize where these gateways occur with these paths shown. However, not all gateways are created equally. Some gateways have a higher attractiveness than others. The gateway size is now proportional to the amount of students that pass through them. We can see that the attractiveness of the gateways decreases in the middle of the two places. Therefore, we can see that the other two alternative routes spread out in the middle while converge at the end. Now let's do a walkthrough of the gateways and the most common path. The first gateway is in front of Geyser Library, where most students travel on a daily basis. The next gateway is a split path. Most students chose the right path because it is a more direct route to Remac. The next gateway is a shortcut through the trees which many students take. The next gateway is another splitting of the paths. The choice is less crucial, however, because both paths will converge at a later point. This next gateway is where the previous two paths converge. This next gateway is where the two main paths, the green one and the blue one, converge. And the final gateway is where all paths converge, right in front of Remac. As you can see, we have hypothesized where some cognitive gateways occur on the UCSD campus. However, this is only a brief overview of the data within one cognitive mapping framework. A more in-depth discussion of this data can be found here. Thank you for your time.